Hey, welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I'm back in again for yet another DC Multiverse video, and today it comes courtesy of my friends over at McFarlane Toys. This is a look at two of their brand new DC Multiverse figures, Catman and Robin. The first one being a McFarlane Store Gold Label exclusive, which means you can only get it at the McFarlane Store. Yes, we have Catman. <laughs> Can't say... This was ever on my list of musts have, but uh, yeah, here we are, Catman from Villains United. He does look really good, so I'll definitely give it to him on that. If you've ever wondered why they make those Jokerized figures, it's characters like this. Now, this one I'm very excited for because I'm a huge Tim Drake fan. 90s Tim Drake, let's just uh, be clear on that. Can't honestly say I'm too keen on what they've been doing with the character recently, but that's why I get the lives in the 90s. It's safe there. But yes, the reds, the greens, the blacks, Tim Drake, Robin Reborn. Love to see the artwork of that on the back. This is my Robin, so I'm going to be a little bit biased in the review, just as a heads up. But of course, we'll be fair, right? Here's the barcode for when Tim Drake starts to hit store shelves, hopefully in around September. But in the meantime... This is going to be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new McFarlane Store Gold Label exclusive Catman and the everywhere that McFarlane sells his wares, Tim Drake Robin. And while I got all you 90s DC Comics enthusiasts here, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my DC Multiverse videos. If you haven't already... Please do consider subscribing. Old toys, new toys, daily news updates. Guarantee you'll find something here that you like. Like a man dressed like a cat, right? And speaking of which, here is Catman and Robin all out of the packaging. You do get a few accessories with Catman. Like these cool cat claws. They're pretty well done. You gotta give it to them on this one. It's fisted hand, but it's sculpted in accessory. And I absolutely love it. Love that. And the claws are actually pretty sharp. They're painted beautifully. So through and through, yeah, that's that's an excellent accessory. You get two of them. You also get two open hands, right? Which is nice to see because then you can hold his giant knives, right? So that's cool. Nice paint, nice silver, nice sculpts. No complaints here. Catman, again. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a man dressed like a cat, right? Little ears and whatnot. Go figure. Comics, right? But that's a nice head portrait. Nice costume. Nice paint. Overall, it's a lot of plastic, right? Colored plastic. But for what paint is there, it's fine. He is on the Nightfall Batman body. He has a new belt with weapon storage. So I definitely appreciate that. Love when they incorporate that. The gloves, the hands... Everything looks pretty solid, especially his cloth cape, the back side of the figure. The cape is nice and heavy. No complaints there whatsoever. This looks good. I actually really like that. I wish they would do more of that. We've been spoiled on a few Batmans thus far. Keep it going, I'm just going to say. Now, right here on the gloves. If you look at other Catman comic book designs, it can kind of go either way. Sometimes he's got paint at the gloves right at the top right there to kind of differentiate there are instances where it is just this although with the boots instead of having batman boots he has more of the pirate boots with the cuts in it much like the gloves up top i'm not gonna nitpick this one because when i think about catman that's pretty much close enough as far as the articulation in the head you can get him going left and right and looking down looking up so he can pounce on anybody because he's the cat man right <laughs> too funny now he does have his arms and he's got the bicep and they actually have sculpted in elements to his costume right there so again very well done they did not skimp on that i loves to see that and along with the weapon storage for the giant knives they don't get in the way of his arms they don't hinder him in any way now when you want to start moving the legs around the crotch pocket could be a little stiff just fyi there's nothing at the thigh again it's the same articulation as the nightfall batman it has a nice sculpt to it boots the toe and uh, there's no black pin there it's a brown pin see i knew that they could better match the pins right that's a nice little touch very happy overall with this figure i think they did a solid job for a figure for a character 
I definitely did not ever ask for in terms of uh, getting the plastic treatment, but I'm glad they did because it's a total solid release. Now, over on the Robin aspect of things, this is going to be the same release. It's just a different color scheme with a new head. So you get the same exact battery. However, you do unfortunately get the same exact baton. And just as the first release, it's entirely too thick. Now, if you have a Marvel Legends Gambit, well, uh, yeah, that's a much better way to go. And it looks a lot better for this Tim Drake Robin. Tim Drake himself, again... He just looks great, I will say. I love the blacks to the greens, the yellow cape underneath, and I'll be in agreement with everyone here. He's a lot more armored up than he should be, right? Let's be honest, especially in the chest and the abdomen. The arms, the shoulder pads, the gloves, that all fits, right? But yes, he's a little bit too armored up. But I still like it, right? I just wish that eh, maybe he wasn't as armored up. But he's even got the little ninja toe boots going on with the black and everything else. It's pretty solid overall. I definitely dig this Robin. Couple things to watch out for. The arms, everything was fine. No need to heat them up, right? The only problem I found was in this leg right here. This side is fine. This... When you try to move the knees, he's very stuck, and then this is a lot looser than I would like it to be. It's on that one ratchet point. When you get it going higher up, it's totally fine, but uh, I really wish that they would now work on things being too loose right when you get them out of the packaging. We've been seeing that over and over with a lot of releases. He does have the trigger finger hands, unfortunately. See, a bevy of extra hands would have been great for this, Robin, right? Pointing fingers and whatnot. You do get a lot of rotation out of the head, and right here on mine, it doesn't look like the hair is situated properly. There's nothing I can really do. The front, it looks fine. You would never notice, but from the side, it's a little bit too high up off his ear and towards the back of his skull. Minor inconsistencies here and there, but the looseness of the leg is something that it does bother me, especially when you want to stand him and get him going. Because again, I've been really looking forward to this Robin. The R could have been done a little bit better, let's just be honest. But I'm glad it's, for the most part, yeah, it's the correct R for the logo. And just to kind of show you the differences between the first release to now. New head portrait, new cape, same exact articulation, same exact accessories. And if you're wondering, I cannot swap the heads. The heads just do not come off. Newer releases from McFarland Toys have no problem. But uh, yeah, these aren't switchable. Now, with Batman and Robin, with the Nightfall Batman, they're roughly the same size. Batman's a little bit taller. But I really do think that the year two Batman, being that he is taller, fits better with this Robin. But then the Batman is wildly out of scale with a lot of the other figures. So it really is just a pick your poison. Who do you want to match this Robin up with better? It's all about different tastes and consistencies, but at least you can see the differences between the two. Now, when you have the Jean Paul Valley Azrael Nightfall Batman, yeah, he goes well with the other normal Bruce Wayne Nightfall Batman and this Robin. So it is fun to see. Now we need Nightwing. And to see the rest of the Bat family members, which is spread across multiple timelines. I'm just showing you scale on this. None of this lines up, so you don't have to worry about it. But if you have a collection going, here, at least you can see how it goes. But the fun factor here is that, yes, we have been gradually building Young Justice. So from Superboy to Impulse to now Tim Drake Robin in the correct red and greens. Doesn't look too shabby at all. And yes, they are too tall. It's like high school shows in the 90s, right? A la Buffy the Vampire Slayer. On the Catman side of things, from Catwoman to Batman and all the different looks that he took from them or whatnot. Yeah, he actually scales very well. Again, he's the same size as the Nightfall Batman. But he does look really good with more of these classic rogues. Joker, Riddler, Mr. Freeze. He fits in well. He doesn't have any of those exaggerated Jim Lee lines. He's just Catman, and I totally appreciate that. So that will wrap it up for my look at the brand new McFarland Store Online exclusive Gold Label Catman and the everywhere you buy your McFarland toys, Tim Drake Robin. And I want to say thank you again to McFarland Toys for sending these out for the purposes of this video. If I had anything to say about this, if that if they do another Tim Drake Robin later down the road, put them in a two pack with Anarchy. 90s Anarchy, I would love to see them tackle that character. But in the meantime, 
You've heard my thoughts, and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Catman and Robin. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, keep bringing on the 90s, baby. That's what I love to see. That's where it's just so much fun, so much action figure awesomeness is just waiting to be created. And when they do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.